Hi, and we are back at Intel Innovation 2023, and the 6.5 is on the road. We have an incredible amount of coverage. We're covering new technologies all the way from the client to the hyperscaler data center, and pretty much everything in between. AI has been a, a huge focus here, but Dan, this is not the Vision Conference. This is Innovation Conference, which is all about developers, and it's excited to see all this developer content. Yeah, it's been a, a good couple of days here, Pat. The Innovation Conference brings together sort of the technology arc with the developer community. And as we know, none of this technology is going to run without the developers building the software that sits on top of the silicon. It's a very important yeah. ecosystem. And although we like to sometimes wait where the importance lies, this is really the amalgamation of all those important factors that come together to drive an AI future. Yeah. And so it's been a lot of fun to kind of hear the roadmap, see um, you know, Pat doing his push-ups, but also pushing the envelope right. on getting these five process nodes out in four years and really building an AI future and a story for Intel yeah. in the AI realm. It's funny, uh, a lot of people uh, like to see these big differences between you know, silicon and CRM. Uh, and But one thing it, that all developers, what's important to them is simplicity uh, accessibility and everybody's trying to shave time off getting their products to market, right? It just it just makes sense. And one of the biggest announcements was that the Intel Developer Cloud uh, went GA. Multiple types of silicon, multiple types uh, of tools, uh, and all the way from you know uh, free versions to uh, paid versions. So. And, and we always like to say that, that partners and, and customers are the grand uh, purifier, and we not only have uh, head of Intel Developer Cloud, but, but two uh, partners here. So Marcus, Peter, Daniel, welcome to the 6.5, uh, first time. Thank you for coming on the show, and congratulations uh, on the big announcements. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, we do like to get that kind of ground truth. So we'll start with Marcus, because I want to hear the Intel <laughs> right. point And then compare view. notes. Well, yeah. But then we'll, we'll have okay. Marcus put on the earmuffs, <laughs> and then we're going to ask, you know, I'm, I'm, but in serious, Marcus, so everybody's very interested in what Intel is doing with the Intel Developer Cloud. Give us that kind of high level, what's the sauce, what's the excitement, why is everybody uh, focused, still focused on this announcement? Yeah. yeah, great question, Dan. Yeah, so I think the important one is we want to really cater to the developers, top to bottom. Right. I mean, we are making major investments in all parts of the stack. We are building out fabs. We are investing in process technologies, but we're very aggressively also investing in the in, in the software. And the best way to enable developers, it's the 21st century, is obviously to provide this as a as a cloud service. Um, and that's what we've been focused on. And you know, we're seeing two examples of people who are able to to take advantage of that very quickly. Uh, a lot of people are just in the cloud, native cloud native and they want access to the greatest, latest and greatest, and the only way they can get access to that is as a cloud service. And that's what, what uh, my team and I provide as a, as a cloud service, which means that developers can come in, and they can come in at different layers of the stack. Somebody wants to go down, they want to go down to the bare metal layer, they want right. to directly optimize things at the very low levels, or other people come in, as you said, the CRM, not quite the CRM level, but at the MLOps at a higher level, and they just want to bring in their containers, and they just want to run their workload. And then, of course, everything else in between. And that's what we're really targeting with the developer cloud is make it as easy, roll out the red carpet for the developers, have them come in, bring in their workloads, get the job done, and then and then they can they also have, as you mentioned, the paid option. Um, and so they can actually then run some of the production also in, in, in that environment. Um, but uh, but the first and foremost important one is that they can test out and, and, and um, take advantage of the latest and greatest technology. And especially in the context of AI, um, it's not just about just putting in an individual box and, and that's it, I'm done. In yeah. a lot of cases, it means they need larger clusters. In, larger, in some cases, they need you know, hundreds of, of Gaudi cards or Ponte Vecchios or GPU Max um, cards in the same cluster with high-end storage, high-end networking. We can provide them everything from just low-end VM all the way to these large clusters all in one place. And I think that's where we can help speed up the, the right. speed things up because that means that you know if they want to go to a major CSP uh, later on, if they want to go build stuff on prem, they can really test drive things in the developer cloud, and not just the products that are out on the market today. I already have Emerald Rapids um, fifth generation oh, Xeon already in the developer cloud today. Mm -hmm. So if developers come in, they can test drive. There's restrictions. We have you know limited quantities, but they can come in and they can test drive 
that next generation hardware with the latest software. They can bring in their software, they can optimize it. By the time it is available at the major CSPs, they can instantly hit the ground running. So it's a great way for us to expose our technology early on and then get the feedback from the developers. Here, what's working well, what's not working well. We expect the performance should be this. They're only getting 90% of the performance. Where is that performance delta right. coming from? Maybe we have to go back, fix our part of the software. We can help them fix things on their end. It's, it's a great way for us to collaborate with, with the ecosystem. Got a big smile on my face uh, when I saw the, the slide, that you know, the one slide, everything's on it, <laughs> and it shows, you know, CPUs, uh, GPUs, FPGAs, uh, Gaudi, and like you said, not only today, but also tomorrow, because that really is the, you know, it's funny, people s talk about the circle of life. It's the circle of silicon, right? And one end, ultimate programmability, and the other end, you have ultimate efficiency, and then everything uh, in between. I thought that was really, um, it, it's very unique uh, out there. So, uh, like every great uh, developer tool, uh, every piece of software that has ever been on the planet, right, multi-stage step uh, to get it out. Uh, you announced a beta uh, previously, and also at the show, right, the big news was it was going GA. What, are, what were some of the learnings uh, that you made uh, or that you, you saw in between uh, beta and going GA, or what optimizations uh, did you make aside from what you would expect, like bugs, right? Bug fixes is always there, but but any any major things that changed? Well, so the most basic level, like when we first launched last year, we had a huge supply chain problem, and all we had was one gig switches. That's <laughs> how we <laughs> strung things together. Since then, we've dramatically upgraded. We have 100 gig switches all over the all across the board. Um, the other major focus shift in focus has been on AI. Yeah. Um, with on generative AI specifically, and that's where we dramatically we've dramatically increased the number of accelerators that we put in the developer cloud, because that's where we see a huge amount of demand. Um, and then the other thing we're seeing is that you know as we work with these communities, we're making changes all across the stack and 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 um, and improving things. Um, the other thing we're seeing is that the workloads are changing so quickly, um, so that really also like the cluster sizes that we're building out are much larger than what we had initially anticipated. Um, so there's a lot of, the, the workloads are changing so quickly, that's probably the biggest change, I think, yeah. that, that we're learning from. It's, it's hard to predict even what's happening three months from now. How often do you do uh, code drops and code changes? Well, it, it's continuous, it's, it's a cloud service, so we're constantly updating firmware. We have a full validation pipeline, obviously, where we yeah. have synthetic workloads running, we make sure that things work well, and then we have a, a phase deployment out in, into the cloud. Um, but the changes are flowing out continuously because, as, as you can imagine, it's a cloud service, so there's many, many different pieces, everything from firmware updates to OS updates to network OS changing, yeah. storage versions changing. It's a it's a living organism. Like so a quick adder, though, to the, to the going GA is, are you seeing any uh, material changes in your developer community itself? Are the developers evolving year to year as you're sort of seeing this product come to life? Very much so, uh, very much so. I think when we first started, it was, it was just a bare metal, mostly it was the focus. And what we're seeing now is we're seeing more and more people coming in at higher levels of the stack. And that's where you know we're just going to continue building out higher and higher levels of abstractions. We are going to be introducing a Kubernetes service as well in the, next, um, in the next couple of months, as well as additional MLOps services. So you know we want to, th there's some people really care about the bare metal, but a lot of people just want to go and get the jobs done. And so that's where we're rapidly moving up the, the stack and providing high level services for people. So it's more of a turnkey solution. I'm not the OS expert. I want to come in and test something. I want to bring in my containers. I just want to bring in my models and I just want to run things. One of the other things we're doing, for instance, uh, for large language models, uh, we just gave a demo earlier today uh, in the demo grounds where we're also providing a large language model builder environment, meaning Fine. that you know, I'm not an expert in building something, I, you know, but I have a nice UI, fully abstracted, and I can go build, build stuff on top of it. Cool. Um, so that's the direction that, that we're going. Cool. We should give Marcus a break. No, I think we should. <laughs> right? we've, I can we've, heard, it, so. uh, we've heard all about the Intel Developer Cloud from Intel. Now let's cross-check let's cross check, let's get, let's cross -check <laughs> these, uh, uh, these notes here. Um, maybe you know we, we Peter uh, start with you with uh, SiteMana. How, wh what are you doing in the Intel uh, Developer Cloud? Uh, so I mean SiteMana, we essentially do AI prediction and then we do the uh, uh, email generation. Uh, we basically use the uh, Intel Developer Cloud to actually generate those emails. So, so one of the things we talked earlier was like I'm using one of those uh, uh, f uh, 4x the uh, A1100. So it's like I'm not using the most like expensive one because I have to I have to look at long term. Uh, unit economic that actually makes sense for me. 
Right. And so they, 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 although it's like you, you right now you kind of see emails cranking out every 20 seconds or so. That's OK, right. because these are not like, these are not mission critical. I'm not, user does not have to interact with it. This is where you can see the Gen AI sort of working in the background while, mm -hmm. you know, it's the, the, where the machine actually automates rather than me go in there like, hey, I like this, regenerate, regenerate, like, you know, how, how, how you inter interact with most of the uh, LM these days. Um, overall experience, that's been pretty great. Uh, the, the most important part, again, unit e economics for us, because we we're, we're looking at, you know, because you, you're switching, I mean, I've been, I've been playing with, originally, you're, you know, you, you have these cloud credits, and then when you burn them up, yes. you're like, oh, you buy your GPUs, you run these in your in your home, because because, <laughs> and then you, you essentially use your your production service hitting your home server, and then just, you know generating the stuff and then hitting it back, because then then you're like, at some point, like, oh man, like I don't want to run this stuff in my house. You're like, how do I get a data server running, right? And then and right. then you're like, okay, these GPUs off the market, you have specific licenses. You you're, you're not allowed to put them in the server in, in 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 into data center. You're like, okay, am I really breaking the license? Because I'm not really. Reselling the GPU, I'm just using this on my own, and this, and this is why you kind of you need a service which is like commercially you know, unit economic. Because there, you know, when people like order the, 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 these these really expensive GPU servers, I'm always wondering like, how are you affording this? Like, right. how are you like like? And then, but the thing thing is that the my my point is like you know because I have to make sure that makes sense for me first because every penny I have to pay for that, that's one penny out of my pocket. Uh, you know that's kind of a that's kind of and then Intel Cloud you know developer cloud does pr produce it it, it it hits a pretty good balance in terms of affordability and the profitability. That's so, a, I mean that sounds good to me, <laughs> right? And it sounds like flexibility when it comes to licensing and all the licenses of what you might use instead. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Well, scale is important, and I like that he used the word unit economics. You know, when you're building it in startup mode, you have to be thinking about every expense, exactly. you know, and every dollar is ideally going towards that customer acquisition. We or know something about that. I don't know our tiny little companies, Dan. You know, <laughs> we've done it. We've done this before. We've done yeah. it. We've built it. We've helped others. Yep, for sure. Um, so Dan, guy with a great yeah. name. Um, <laughs> So with Prediction Guard, you know, we'd like to hear similarly your experience working with the Intel Developer Cloud. Sure. Talk a little bit about you know how you arrived and how that's uh, you know how that's proliferating for you. Yeah. So um, Prediction Guard provides sort of safe and trustworthy access to LLM models, which means that we host our own LLMs, uh, custom inference and decoding out of those LLMs to control things for things like structure and factuality checking of the output, toxicity checking of the output, um, which means that we need to run a lot of LLMs, in particular like the latest uh, Llama 2's models and MPT, Falcon, these yeah. sort of private open models that people want to use for real enterprise use cases where right. they, they have concerns maybe about privacy or other things of using just a closed uh, API service for yeah, their by the way, AI interactions. Every SaaS conference we've been to, whether <laughs> it's consumer or enterprise, has the magic layer. And it sounds like you've got the magic layer that turns kind of a homogeneous experience into one that's safer. Yeah, right? yeah. And more, a little bit more predictable. Correct, yeah, yeah. So it's that stage between like, oh, I've prototyped something cool with OpenAI yes. to like, how do I scale this out in my business? That's kind of right where we live. Right. Um, so in terms of Intel Developer Cloud, we need to host these models. Um, we also need to do this in a very efficient way because a lot of our users are really enterprise use cases where, for example, they're parsing 7,000 medical transcriptions per day to fill out medical forms, or they're processing like a million patent applications to generate content for lawyers or something like that, right? So you can't do that with um, like these per token usage models that are out there. So we need to host our own models and provide that in a way that our customers can access them and put a volume of, of calls into those. Um, so what we've done is actually we've used the ADEX Gaudi 2 instance in Intel Developer Cloud. And we have, currently we have seven of our LLM models that we support. 
hosted on Gaudi 2, so mainly Llama 2 models, but also other like code generation models like Wizard Coder. And we're actually running those in production in our product. So we've got live customers hitting uh, the models in, in Intel Developer Cloud on Gaudi 2 to do these sort of safe and reliable interactions with LLMs. And um, what we found is we had our models running on right. like cloud A100s. Um, not, not only is there a shortage of those uh, uh, and problem, various problems with that, um, but they, they are expensive, um, especially if you want to keep them up all the time. So for us, it was really a game changer to be able to move these models over, host them, have them up all the time. And um, with really great tooling from like Hugging Face and Intel working together on the Optimum library and, and other things with Habana Labs, um, we were able to port over our model servers. We we had them up and running in like an hour after getting access to an, an hour. Yeah, I, I was. I was. My follow up was going to be how long, how hard. Yeah, that's that's that blows me away. Yeah. One hour. So yeah, yeah, and and not only in that hour, but we saw at least for some of our some of the models are slightly faster, but some of them like the Llama two models, we're right. getting twice the throughput out of the uh, Gaudi twos as compared to what we were running in the A one hundreds. I think that's the highlight reel moment. No, I know that's the uh, <laughs> that's the super clip right there. So yeah. no, that's, listen, you I mean, expect that just to clarify. I mean, that's what we're seeing. There's a bunch of hugging face blogs also, and yes. one of the most recent blogs they're talking about how uh, we're beating the H100 also by. Yeah, 40%. yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah I think you and I covered models. that on one of our Friday we shows. We did. Yeah, we yeah, hit that on the uh, six five podcast yeah. Friday. So Marcus, I mean, Peter and Dan are obviously in here, um, and delighted to have them. Delighted. Uh, but for the you know five million other programmers out there that you might want to be attracting, how does somebody get started uh, on this? How do they get started on the Intel Developer Cloud? Uh, very easy. You go to cloud.intel.com. It's all self-service. You register for the service, and off you go. Um, we have the different tiers. You can also you can apply for cloud credits, um, um, and um, and you just get started and start using the service. Are there any parameters of certain size or? You know, does it have to be a company? Can it be a university or, or any restrictions on we that? We don't have any restrictions. It's really open to anybody. What's the advantage for getting in early now that the Intel Developer Cloud is GA? We actually we have an early adopter program, and the first hundred people who sign up for it will get super steep get discounts. So don't be late for that. Well, gosh, let, let's get the smartphones out, Dan. We're, we're on this. Already building. <laughs> I love it. Well, that's very exciting, Marcus, and uh, we appreciate you giving us a little bit. I mean, for everyone out there, listen, there you go. Check out that link in the show notes. Go give it a shot if you're a developer. But Marcus, yeah. appreciate you giving us the background from the Intel perspective. Dan, Peter, thank you both very much for sharing a little bit about your companies and how you're using the Intel yeah. Developer Cloud. I look forward to having all of these gentlemen back maybe next year. Oh, absolutely, and I'm really impressed that, that there was actual production workloads being done. I, I hear developer, I think. You know, it's for development, and then you move it somewhere else. But uh, it's impressive to to think that real live production workloads are. Got to run businesses, print print cash. Exactly, and so what a benefit of not having to move it. So hey, next year, uh, we're gonna basically 100x the actually uh, uh, basically revenue per inference. Oh wow! Yep. We you definitely have to come on next <laughs> year. This would be great. This is a to be continued here, folks, but uh, really appreciate that. It remind me to talk founder shares. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to this episode of The 6-5 at Intel Innovation 2023 in San Jose. That was a great conversation. But for now, for Patrick and myself, we got to say goodbye, but we'll see you back really soon.